So happy Veterans Day, Dank Division, and to all of you, those of you who have served. It's an honor and a privilege to pretty much celebrate you guys on this day, and hopefully on more than just this day, on every chance that we get. So without further ado, let's open up, before we drop into the news, this one bundle, the Call of Duty Endowment Bundle, of course coming with an M1 Garand and a 1911. Call of Duty has already done so much work in regards to helping pretty much soldiers who come back from the war find jobs, and they have had great success so far, so remember that this bundle here actually does help fund this as well as help those people get back on their feet. So without further ado, let's actually dive into the news. And we're going to start off with the thing that dropped sometime late at night and picked up steam relatively fast. And that was the use of the Quran in Call of Duty Vanguard Zombies. As if, you know, Vanguard Zombies wasn't having enough problems as it is. It turns out, and this went over many people's heads until someone pointed it out, there was a Quran on the floor that you could step on, shoot, burn, do whatever you wished with. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Quran is, pretty much, to sum it up in a simpler term, it's the equivalent it's the Muslim equivalent of the Bible. It's a very important religious text. It pretty much was getting desecrated by being left on the ground. And it was called for and immediately removed by Call of Duty as they put up the statement that Call of Duty is made for everyone. There was insensitive content to the Muslim community mistakenly included last week and has since been removed from the game. This should never have appeared as it did in the game. We deeply apologize. We are taking immediate steps internally to address the situation to prevent such occurrences in the future. My biggest question is how did this happen? Now, it's, it's not a case of, you know, that there's not a place for the Quran or the Bible or any other religious text. It's just, why was the Quran on the floor? Why was the asset there in the first place is my big question. Because when I when I picture zombies, the first thought to my mind is not the Quran, it's not the Bible. It's, well, quite frankly, I think of the Book of the Dead if I'm going to think of a book. So, I mean, Christ. But that's not what got everyone's attention. was later on in the day, a very noteworthy and reliable source... You all know and love him. Tom Henderson decided to bring up a point that there are rumors, and remember to take this with a grain of salt, that we could be looking at two World War II heroes dropping into Vanguard as well as Warzone, both of which are owned by Disney. The big thing going is that Disney and Activision have pretty much been in the talks for a while about some sort of deal and I think we need to discuss these two people in particular. Now I'm going to go over who they are, just, just like a general description. Then I'm going to go over why they fit in to the aesthetic of the game. And I'll do something that I don't think any content creator so far has had the balls to do. I will make a fake bundle that you guys can envision in your head. To get you guys hyped up so that you can push and push for Activision and Disney to make this decision. Because if this turns out to be true, this is going to be quite possibly better than Rambo, better than any bundle we've seen that was limited time. Let's start off with the big guns. Quite literally, Captain America, Steve Rogers. For those of you who have been living under a rock for the past decade and haven't paid attention to the Marvel Cinematic Universe or haven't, you know, read the comics, Captain America, or should we say Steve Rogers, born and raised in Brooklyn, takes a super soldier serum and pretty much becomes a lone super soldier and takes on Hydra, led by none other than Red Skull. Pretty much becoming a hero in his own right, he ends up defeating Red Skull, but 
ends up having to sacrifice himself into the ice. He is without a doubt one of the most synonymous and famous World War II characters of all time. Now, why, why would someone like him fit the aesthetic, perhaps, of Vanguard? Well, let's put it this way. We've always wondered what would happen if we put Cap in a game or movie that wasn't, you know, T for Teen or PG-13. I'm talking rated R or, in this case, rated M. Having it that he can cut loose a little bit, be able to be a more of a heavy hitter, but why, why or why would he be important? Let's put it this way, his mission in the comics as well as the or first movie was to take down Hydra, to take down a secret organization built on world domination. Sound a little familiar? For those of you who haven't already played Vanguard, this isn't really a spoiler, this is going to be more of an actual history lesson. When the Reich went underground, people had to hunt down these bastards. And it would make sense for Captain America to be there. I mean, the only contradiction is that he ends up freezing in ice before the war ends. So, I mean, there is that contradiction here, but let's face it, Kata has not really been one to steer away from breaking someone else's cannon for the sake of throwing someone into the game. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Now, let's, let's picture a bundle. Let's say this is real. Let's say this is actually real. Let's start toying with the bundle. So first, the skin. If we had to pick a skin, it's probably going to be the iconic World War II skin. It's not going to be the Wakandan tech one that we see at the very end of uh, the Infinity Saga. It's probably not going to be him with the beard. It's more than likely going to be the cheesy looking one that we all laughed at in Avengers or quite possibly the one from, well, actually... Probably the one from First Avenger would fit the aesthetic. Now, if we had to pick weapons, laying this out, more than likely going to be a Thompson, more reminiscent of the one that was actually used in World War II. This means probably a 30-round mag and a bunch of other attachments to make you feel like you were a super soldier behind this weapon. Odds are you also see a trusty 1911 as that was Cap's pistol back in the day. What attachments this could withhold? Who knows? But then people start going, what about the shield? Well, there's a problem with trying to throw on the shield. The shield is circular, and even the shield that he uses when he's doing the war bonds doesn't fit the rectangular shape. I'm going to make you guys laugh, and then I'm going to make you guys say, please let this be a thing. The second I looked at the ride shield and I started thinking of Cap and went, oh my god, why has no one thought of this? How about a taxi door? Give us the taxi door that he used in First Avenger where he pretty much rips that off and gets shot at. Please throw that our way. Because that would be a hilarious way to reskin the ride shield. Quite frankly, making it more entertaining. But it would also kind of feel weird having Cap sitting in a corner with that in front of him. Now, as for the finishing move, I mean, between the comics and the movies, there's an almost an endless line of finishing moves that you could throw in there not to mention that the calling card could range from anything to one of the propaganda posters to him selling the war bonds or just you know the iconic shot of him you know holding the shield ready to throw it or even just him throwing it and as for the emblem well you could you could go just about any way you want with that including quite possibly, you know, the I can do this all day, you know, look. That could go literally anyway. But let's now look at the next person that was rumored. Now, remember, as I said before, take this with a grain of salt. This one actually fits the aesthetic even more. Dr. Jones. Henry Jones Jr., better known to everyone as Indiana Jones. Pretty much taking on the Nazis in regular succession. Two out of his three movies, he is fighting the Nazis over a supernatural power. Sound a little familiar? Because what do you think about this? Vanguard Zombies focuses on digging up trinkets all over the world, including in the desert. 
in an attempt to win the war. Gee, sound oddly familiar to, you know, digging up trinkets in the desert, specifically the Ark of the Covenant, to win the war, the power of God at your hand? Odds are that if you were to make Indiana Jones canon to the story, and this is how I'm gonna build him into the aesthetic, the very thought of them digging up all of these artifacts would immediately have Indiana just showing up on a whim going, okay, why did they do this? Where are they going? This belongs in a museum. Until all of a sudden, he probably end up accidentally uncovering the whole undead thing and would then have to battle it. <laughs> and just the thought of him running away from zombies and trying to avoid stuff, taking shots here and there, it... Harrison Ford's Indiana Jones would definitely fit the aesthetic. Now, let, let's build his bundle. Now, there are quite a few skins that we could use. We can use the traditional one of him with the leather, leather coat, the hat, you know, the iconic look. You can take off the leather coat if you really wanted to. Hell, if you want to go a step further, you could put him in a German uniform for when he's undercover. You could even just throw him in the outfit that he wore when he was in the desert. That just makes it honestly iconic. So let's ask ourselves, what weapons would he wield? Well, the tricky thing is he only ever carries around that revolver of his, which by all means, add the revolver, because that beaten up thing, just the iconic sound, please let there be a sound bite for that revolver, because that thing sounded beautiful. Now, as for the other weapons, I mean, you could throw him a couple of enemy weapons, throw him an MP40, throw him the RP, throw him a rocket launcher, you know, shit like that. But that's that's not what immediately was the first thing that came to mind when thinking up this bundle. You want me to make you all laugh? His finishing move. Some of you are probably already thinking of it right now. He does the finishing move. The guy turns around, starts twirling a gun, and all Indy just does is poof, shoots him. And he falls down to the ground. He puts the gun down, shaking his head, and you go right back to playing. If you don't know what this is a reference to, you guys need to watch Indiana Jones because that is a reference to him watching a swordsman twirl the sword, twirl the sword, twirl the sword, and he just goes, fuck this, <laughs> and just shoots him and goes about his day. But no, I'm, I'm not going to lie. If those rumors are true and we get both of those operators, I'm buying that hands down irregardless of what we get or what we don't get in their bundles, the idea of being able to play as two of the most iconic characters of all time that have been in the World War II era, it, it just boggles my mind and I hope, and I hope, 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 hope that they go a step further because I hope that they're not the only two because some other movies come to mind, specifically Saving Private Ryan comes to mind as one of the other ones I would love to see. And with that being said, that is pretty much all I've got for you guys in regards to the Vanguard news for tonight. Leave a comment down below if you had to pick another World War II era character that you would like to see dropping in to Vanguard. Who would you want it to be? What are your thoughts on quite possibly being able to play as Cap or Dr. Jones as an operator and being able to hear their quips and everything? Whether or not they're actually going to use Chris Evans... Not sure if they'll actually be able to do that, or maybe they'll use the Marvel Avengers video game voice. Who knows? So if you guys enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below. I love having the conversations I have with all of you guys. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so we can grow this channel. Also, finally, finally have that Discord open. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description down below so that we can keep these conversations going. And to all of you out there, you guys have a wonderful day, night, whatever you're doing. Do it wholeheartedly. And of course, as always, this is Dank Dan, signing off. Get them to hit that subscribe button, Dank. It's the only way we can figure out the numbers. What do the numbers mean, Dank? We're wasting valuable time.